I have a topic to bring up if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And that is uh, I, for for our, the listeners here, it is to really understand the benefits of infrasonic type bass as compared to the normal subwoofer bass that they're accustomed to, both from a frequency and also kind of a pressurization pressurization perspective, Jeffrey, to give you the softball pitch. Okay, um, as as you know, I mean, when I, I I spoke a little bit about basically the the room gain. That means basically the room gain starts when the pressurization of the room starts. And <clears throat> um, I don't know if, if you if you ever saw movies like uh, you know The Quiet Place or something like that. And there is there is you know so deep infrasonics and only infrasonics actually. You know you you hardly hear from a normal subwoofer when let's say a monster moves around in in, in the house and, and basically the steps are literally just infrasonics you know and and they're all around you and basically the whole room is getting pressurized and you you, you feel so intensely immersed um without even having mid or high frequencies it's, it's just crazy you know and uh this is this is uh, one of the things we feel we're the only company really doing other than a few DIYers, of course, they do that themselves, you know, in, in all kinds of different forms. Of course, everybody has a different belief system. Um, we just believe big cones, big movement, of course, big power, you know, needless to say that our 32 inch, for example, has uh, an amplifier with six kilowatts of RMS. The 32 inch has nine kilowatts of RMS. And what we also found in terms of amplification is, you know, a lot of people in, in the DIY market, they, they, they just take cheap amplifiers with class D uh, power supplies and uh, amplification. And the, the, the big problem of those is that the power supply basically um, crashes, you know, when, when very, very deep low base comes to them, you know. So they, they basically... Um, um, we, we call it um, uh, the crest factor, you know, and, and the crest factor of these amplifiers is just very bad with very low bass, you know. <clears throat> that means they cannot produce for a prolonged period of time, let's say one second, two seconds, five seconds, the full energy, you know, even if they claim, let's say, even if you take a very, very high-end PA amplifier, like a lap group or whatever, with the 20 kilowatts, if you measure them, there is plenty of information out there, you know, uh, for more than, let's say, 100 milliseconds, they go down to basically um, two kilowatts maximum output power, because that's how how the, the, the switch mode power supply can basically only deliver the current for these low frequencies. And, and so we designed the amplifiers that we can deliver uh, for a for a long uh, period of time, up to, let's say, 10 seconds, uh, the full RMS output power down to literally zero hertz, you know, and, and this is, this is um, not easy to do, you know, uh, but we, we are very, very uh, anal about how we design, you know, everything from amplifier to DSP to to even our custom built subwoofers, that every single part along the line basically plays perfectly together and performs. You know, it's another thing uh, talking about, for example, power compression. You know, when you when you pump in six kilowatts in a subwoofer, of course, the voice call gets hot. So, um, you know, uh, then the speaker compresses and all that kind of stuff. But all this is basically. Um, taken care of when we rate the, the product, you know, they're, they're way underrated actually, or, or some, some are, are really, really conservatively rated. You know? Well, I can't wait to hear the uh, 32 inch at the Trinov center there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, that, and that's the thing. If I if I can pick your on your comment for just a second, Shane, is that, yeah. that is a, the distinction between, you know, subwoofer base, what we can hear and infrasonic. Because you can't actually hear the thirty-two. Yeah, yeah, it's true, true, true. You're just, just feeling it, and, yeah. And that's the thing, yeah. It's it's the pressurization that that fills the space, you know, when the content in the movie is provided. 
And it's something, you know, that brings you back to your kind of primal human instinct in that your body physically reacts to it. It cannot right. help it. So you become immediately immersed in the content as determined by the, by the producers, right? By the directors is that your body becomes kind of fight or flight, like what is going on? <laughs> and it's, it's a lot of fun. And in fact, you know, I'll even say is that there 99 probably even higher percent of residential home theaters, you know, in the United States and around the world don't benefit from infrasonic content because they don't have infrasonic subwoofers. So yeah. any home theater that's out there, regardless of expense, if they don't have infrasonic subwoofer in it, they're missing some of the content that they they're enjoying, you know, or want to enjoy every day. So you could even add an infrasonic, you know, subwoofer or subwoofers from Ascendo to any existing home theater and benefit from more, you know, more enjoyment of the content. Right, right, right. Yeah, man, I've heard um, I've heard infrasonics a few times, but nothing down to one hertz. <laughs> that sounds insane. Well, it's it's just I mean, you 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 can like like Todd said, you cannot really hear that anymore. Yeah. Well, you just feel it in your you just you yeah, just feel yeah. it you feel, feel your it. body it, it, it feel you know when you go below 10 hertz it feels like uneasy you know yeah um and, in the best uh, possible way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but um, but still i mean you can perceive even like three hertz you know easily the pressurization of the room no problem you know 